Hi everyone, I'm here with another word from Father, and um, he's still showing me judgment for false teachers, false prophets, and anyone who hasn't repented from putting their mouth on a child of God. He brought me to Second Peter's chapters 1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to come through and minister whatever it is that needs to be ministered. As I was reading... Second Peter chapter 1. All of the things that I have been talking about throughout the different videos. The love. The temperance. The godliness. The brother kindness. The charity. All of it has been surmounted in Second Peter. And I'm going to specifically read verses 4 through 8. Where, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brother kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For it if for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout my walk with the Lord, with my Father, with my God, from the time that I was of knowledge, which is the age of seven. He asked me to walk in his steps. And I said, yes. And I have not faltered in that walk. Has the walk been easy? No, it has not. Has the walk been filled with treacherousness and deceit and conviction and witchcraft and evil yes it has even to the point that they couldn't break me so they made the decision to bring a Ouija board to the place that I called home and they released a demon when my children were but one and a few months old. A demon named Ball. This demon was released not just to take my body and my soul. It was released to destroy my bloodline from inception, from the beginning. God has finally released me to say, you will not win, Lucifer. What you tried to do, 
in my mind by creating a labyrinth, an echo, by creating distraction and noise, you will not win. You have lost. You just haven't accepted it yet. You will reap what you sow. Death is coming to your door. In chapter 2 of Second Peter, the Bible speaks of the destruction of the false teachers, the false prophets, the lying tongues, the lying witnesses. In the last week, Lucifer has created a whirlwind where it mimics the movement that God had in my life. And for a split second, I thought I was caught up in that world with, until God opened my eyes and allowed me to see that I was standing still and I was fine. So then he brought a cold an infection into my body. He tried to shut me up so that I could not speak the words that Father was putting in my mouth. He tried to get me to stop going to work. He tried to stop me from going to the places that Father had me going to. He tried to continue the mirage of fake living that he had created but because my eyes were open enough because my discernment was now enough I was able to see the falseness of the life that he was trying to create and no matter what he tried to bring to my attention in prayer I always went to God I always asked God, if it is not your will, if this is not your path for me, remove it from my face. Remove it from my path. Remove this blockage. Do not allow the enemy to falsely lead me in a direction that is not yours. And nothing that Lucifer has tried to bring to my attention, to bring to my path, has fulfilled. In fact, this morning on my way to work, there was an accident, a traffic accident, through an intersection that I had just passed two hours before. And I had heard when I arrived at where the location that I'm in right now, I had heard a vehicle racing. And I remember Father telling me, you need to move now. And I was like, okay. And I kid you not, I was still going the speed that I was supposed to go. 40 miles an hour down the same road that I've been taking for the last month. The path that Father has had me take. Every so often he would have me go a different route. Go down this road instead of that road. Turn here instead of there. Don't go all the way to the end turn at the beginning. Don't go all the way to the beginning. Turn at the end. And he'd give me directions like this randomly. And I was obedient. I'd turn here. I'd turn there. He'd bring police officers to where I was sleeping. And that would tell me that I needed to move and go to a different location. He'd bring obstacles to the locations that he no longer wanted me to go. Last night, on my way back to the place where I was going to go to sleep, there was a vehicle following me. Suddenly the vehicle sped up to the point that it almost hit me from behind. 
The enemy will do whatever he can. Lucifer does not touch his heart. He wants to destroy God's children and he will use any means necessary to get you to fear, to back off, to stand down, to remove yourself from the promises the Father has in your life because you have a role to fulfill in the kingdom, whether it's to be part of the wedding party or part of the guests who will attend the dinner. Yes, I am speaking about the wedding of the groom and the wedding of the bride, for it is not the way you think. Use your discernment. If God created a man and he created a woman, why would he be marrying both? Why would Lucifer want you to think he'd be marrying both? He's not a, a, a polyamorous or whatever the heck the multiple marriage person is. God is a God of order. Two by two. He never said that it was him and everyone else. We are his children not his bride. He created a son. Use your discernment. Open your eyes. The reason you don't want to box God is because Lucifer is in the box. Lucifer is in the lies. The church tells us that God wants to marry the church. Is this what the Bible says? Read your Bible. Read the verses. Ruth didn't marry multiple men. She married Boaz. Esther didn't marry a country. She married a king. Rebecca didn't marry a generation. She married Isaac. Abraham was made a father of many nations, but his wife was Sarah, Sarah. Noah was also married to a woman. Each of his children had a wife. There never was and there never will be multiple marriages, not even in God's kingdom. Because he is not a God that is like the enemy. He is not like Lucifer. He is a God of order. He is a God of principle. He is a God of laws. And, and he is a God of justice. And he does not speak a thing and change his mind. That is only something Lucifer does. Use your discernment in this hour. For my children will die from lack of knowledge. Don't go to God and say, she's lying. She's trying to change the words of the Bible. I'm not the one that's going to lose my soul. Don't be like the unwise virgins. Be like the wise virgins. Seek the Lord. Use your discernment. Speak to the Holy Spirit. Let, it, let the Holy Spirit, Spirit guide you. Let the Holy Spirit open your eyes. Let the Holy Spirit fill your heart. For in this hour, judgment is here. God is not playing anymore. He's not giving any more time. There is no more grace. The path to redemption is repentance. Not just in words, but in your heart. I don't need to see who you are. I don't need to hear your words. I don't need to see your heart. Because I am not your judge. That's God's job. In the name of my Lord Jesus, I pray you repent. And I pray you seek him in this hour. Amen.